going to play the video in a second, but this is a guy who seems to be confused about being a Hebrew Israelite slash being a black Christian. So he's making his argument that both sides are wrong. He does have a point here or there, but for the most part, these doctrines are starting to break off like variants and strains from diseases. And it's become a plague with all these multiple doctrines that are popping up. Now, I've been trying my best to stay out of this back and forth between black Christians and black Hebrew Israelites. The reason why I've been trying to stay out of it is number one, it's because at the end of the day, unless you place faith in Christ Jesus, you will not be in heaven with him. You will not inherit the kingdom of God. There is only one way to God. And that is through Christ Jesus. And unless you be born again, place faith in Christ, you are condemned. Another reason why I don't engage in that type of back and forth is because obviously the BHI camp, when it comes to their doctrine, they're wrong. When it comes to the, the text that they try to prove that the Israelites are black and Jesus was black, they're wrong. But guess what, Christian, brother in Christ, you're wrong also, because the very text that you try to use, which is in Galatians, that there are neither Greek or Jew, no um, bond or free, no male, no female, and for we're all one in Christ. That text has nothing to do with skin color. That text has everything to do with us being one in our salvation in Christ, period. So there's wrong on both sides. You get what I'm saying? Uh, obviously, America has a dark past. And a lot of, um, you know, of this Western, this Westernized, Europeanized Christianity is, it has been a plague, you know? And I, I do appreciate that a lot of black, and I do this, black apologists, and I do this on purpose, um, you know, try to shed light on that. But my issue with the black apologist is, is that your research is shallow. Why your research is shallow? Because you're trying to expose white supremacy at the same time upholding white supremacy. Why? Why do I say that? Because you still are telling Africans and black people that they descend from Ham. And you guys are scared to say there's a big, huge possibility that you descend from Sham also. Out the history of Israel, there has always, always, always has been a mixture of Shamites and Hamites. There are times where uh, descendants of Sham, like Joseph, you get what I'm saying? Like Moses, you get what I'm saying? were mistaken as Egyptians. So uh, Joseph, who became second in, in commander in, is, uh, in Egypt, his brothers did not even know who he was. They thought he was an Egyptian. And if you do the research, you know what I'm saying? You, you will see that the ancient Egyptians, they were dark skinned people. They were Nubian people. So I have issues more with my brothers and sisters in Christ. It's because we're supposed to be about truth, period. Whether it hurts or whether it don't hurt. My issue with these black apologists is that they want to stay shallow with their research. And I wore this here on purpose because I I know who I am and I know where I came from. Because I I know who I am and I know where I came from. All the praises and the honor goes to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Recha Ha Kodash, and double honors to the elder apostles and bishops of Great Millstone. Honors to you, brethren. Honors uh, to the elect scattered abroad. Shalom to you, few sisters. Peace to the elect. I want to touch on this 
guy here, a touch on the video with this guy here who seems to be confused about being a Hebrew Israelite. I don't know, maybe he practiced it at one time and fell out and went back to Christianity. But it seems like that he's, it seems that he's on the fence and he can't make up his mind which way to go. So he's going to merge both of them together and then he's going to spew out his portion and make this whole new Hebrew Christian doctrine. And we see the Hebrew Israelite doctrines are starting to sway more towards a form of Christianity. He calls on Christ. He calls on Jesus the Christ, right? They, it's a lot of groups out here who's following a form of Christian uh, Hebrew Israelite doctrine. And this is because they can't let go the world. And that's what it is. This man is talking about follow, uh, be a brother in Christ. And he did explain the fact that his fellow troopers are upholding white plantation Christianity. But what he don't understand, he's, he's upholding it as well. Because the Lord did make a separation between the children of Israel and all the other nations. Right? And when Yahushua came on the scene, he came for the Israelites to bring them back through faith. You know? Through the remissions of sins to come back through faith. It wasn't so much about the law. Right? Because you had our people who was keeping the law. But they didn't have the law righteously. They wasn't following it righteously. It was going off. And this is what Paul was going through. So Yahweh came to bridge us back through faith to get us back close to the Lord, Yahweh. And, and Jesus the Christ is not cutting it. There's, that's one name we should not be calling on. So anyway, this guy says, um, you know, he doesn't care. It's all about coming back and being with Christ. Right? Well, let's see what the scriptures say. John 8, 32, 8, 8 and 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Right? So if you don't know the truth, you're not free. This man is coming with his own spin of doctrine of what he thinks the truth is. His mindset is truth is still plantation, Western cultured Christianity. Right? He doesn't understand, at least he should know. That's why the scripture says this guy has a zeal, but not according to knowledge. He doesn't know that when they took the Bible in the Apocrypha and gave us the slave Bible, the very doctrine that he's speaking of is the very doctrine that they gave him, that they gave us. Right? So he's still speaking a Christianized type doctrine, but also linking a little bit of heritage with it. So why the hell are you worried about wearing fringes and have a heritage and knowing who you are if you're not willing to lead in that position. Right? These are one of those guys who who wouldn't wouldn't mind uh, uh Harad the Great to be ruling over him in the kingdom of heaven. You know? Or the Herodian. Yeah, he wouldn't mind that. As long as we still cool with him. Like in the ancient times, man. But anyway, let's go to Lamentation. Lamentation 1 and 7. He Basically, he's saying we're supposed to forget about all that. Don't worry about it as long as you want in Jesus. Lamentations 1 and 7. Jerusalem remembered in the days of her affliction, right? And of her miseries, all her pleasant things that she had in the days of old, this proves Jerusalem is not just talking about some woman, right? When her people fell into the hand of the enemy and none did help her, the adversary saw her and did not and did mock at her Sabbaths, right? So they rejoiced in the downfall of us. Now the Lord is not one who shall, Yahweh B'Hashem Yahweh is not one who shall lie. If he says what? Let's get this real quick. Sometimes you'll have scriptures up and then something else will just come to you. So what is the Lord saying about this? I mean, this is what happened to the children of Israel and all these nations had their hands in destroying the children of Israel, right? Let's go to Jeremiah 30 and 16. Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured and all thine adversaries, every one of them shall go into captivity 
and they that spoil thee shall be a spoil, and all that um, prey upon thee will I give for a prey. We can also see this in Isaiah 14 and 1, where the Lord said he will have mercy on Jacob and will set them in their own lands, right? And they're going to rule over the other nations. So why can't he see this? Well, because he can't quite let go Christianity. That's why he can't see it. He can't lo let go the Christian doctrine. The Christian doctrine, the you know, the power of the other gods, they do have power, right? They can't do anything against the children of Israel starting with the elect. Let me say with the elect. As, and the only reason why they have some power because the Lord gave them power over us. So when you crying on Jesus the Christ and calling on that, and then this man, he says, you know what? That doesn't matter the color. So then, if it doesn't matter the color, then why did they paint them uh, white? Why did they whitewash the images? So now you're accepting not only that image, but that name as well. Let's go to Revelation 1. Let's go to Revelation 1. Revelation 1 and 1. The revelation of Yahweh, which Yahweh uh, God gave unto him, to shew unto his service things which must shortly come to pass, right? Uh, by the angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and the testimony of Yahweh, and of all things that he saw, right? So I don't know what this man take is on uh, the, the, the complexion of Yahweh. But let's read. Because we see what these Christians say. This is why if you're not seasoned, you shouldn't be dabbling in the other doctrines, trying to figure things out. You need to get built up in the spirit first. Pray to the Lord and get built up in the spirit so you can be able to deal with stuff like this, you know, things of this nature. It says, his head and his hairs were white like wool. Now, you go into the old text. Uh, we, you know, we, we go into the old Bibles too. It says white likened to wool. You know, you had like and then likened. It kind of changes things. So the the apologetic Christians will say, well, wait a minute. You, this is like a parable. But when it comes down to the skin complexion, is it's for real. Well, let's see. White likened unto wool. White as snow. And the other text said liken, uh, white likened to snow as well. See, every time the transliteration in the, in the text is changed, it waters down, right? And his eyes were as a flame of fire. But we're going to understand it. And his feet like unto fine brass. Right? Like unto fine brass. Doesn't mean his feet is brass. Doesn't mean his hair is actually wool. Doesn't mean his hair is actually snow. Right? As it is burned in a furnace. Doesn't mean that his feet burned in a furnace. Right? So we get to the point. In fact, when you go into the old translations, it says like unto lantern in a black chimney. Right? So it's describing it. And then King James and their writers, they describe the same thing, but it's the translations. So this is clearly saying, and the voice is sound of many waters. No, his voice wasn't many waters, but it was the sound of many waters. Right? So we get to the point. So here is the complexion. Here's the, let me say, the description of his head and his hairs, right? The description of his hair is wool. It was white, likened to snow. His eyes was like a flame of fire. No, his eyes wasn't fire like uh, Superman shooting lasers out of his eyes. But it was saying, as likened unto a flame of fire, red. This is what he saw. This is the vision. This is why he described it like the, the description like that. Anyway. If you can't get it, you can't get it. Let's go to Job 30 and 30. When he said, my skin is black upon me. Now, first, you know, the first thing to understand, at that time, it was well known what he looked like, Yahweh Shah, the one you call Jesus. It was well known that um, uh, the Israelites, what they looked like. So we really didn't have to write it in the description to say, hey, this is what he looked like. But for the sake of the prophecy, so... The Lord knew we would lose our heritage and get it back, lose our identity and get it back. We can see that with Renaissance art. But the reason why it said that, because his his um, his feet like unto fine brass, because he was well 
melanated. And when you look at fine brass, it's actually dark. It's not that gold. When you look at a brass trumpet, that's actually gold. Gold looking. Which gold doesn't even technically look like that. Like a polished gold. But a brass, a fine brass, all the derivatives and the, and the stuff is out of it. It's dark. And then you say as it is burnt in a furnace. But when you go to Job 30 and 30, it says my skin is black upon me. Why does it say that? It wasn't the fact that everybody knew that, you know? So it wasn't like a surprise. And uh oh, my skin is black because everybody else's is white. Nope. Let's read a little commentary. Kind of surprising what they say. Some of them have their trickery. It says, The boiling heat of my body have so parched me that my skin looks black. Now you got to show me that somebody that's getting so thirsty and any of those kind of pains that's white. That's so-called white because nobody's white, but with no melanin, no complexion, they all of a sudden turn black. Now we're not talking about the uh, the golden, what they call it, the olive complexion, because olive is either black, red, or green. So we ain't saying that either. That dark tan or, or uh, that tan color. No, we're talking about black. And nobody I ever seen that was like that, that turned black. And then some of them say it was scabs and it was this. <laughs> it was the burning ash. that came. They'll do anything to keep that white supremacy going, man. It was the fact that we were already so-called black and when we became sick, we got duller, we got darker. Right? You can't, you can't keep it no more. That white supremacy is over with. You know, this guy is trying to, in a sense, try to serve two masters. You can't do that. Let's go to 2 Kings 17. That's why the Lord said, Thou shalt have no other God beside me. Right? Because our people was following, claiming they was following the Lord. That's why he said, These pe people speak sweetly with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Those Pharisees, right? But you had our people who also in introduced other gods into the temples. Right? It says, The house of the Lord. Howbeit they did not hearken. Let me go to 38. And the covenant that I had made with you, ye shall not forget, neither shall ye fear other gods, right? This is God fearing Jesus the Christ. That's another God, by the way. And any Israelite who calling on that, that's another God. But the Lord your God, ye shall fear, and he shall deliver you out of the hand of your enemies. Howbeit, they did not hearken, but they did after their former manner. So these nations feared the Lord and served their graven images both their children and their children's children as they did their father, so they did unto this day. So this man is trying to serve the Lord, Yahweh, but he's also trying to serve Jesus the Christ. And you can't do that, right? You can't do that. You know, and he just can't accept that what was done in the past, the Lord required, let me get that, Ecclesiastes 3 15. That which has been is now, and that which is to be has already been. And Yahweh says, God requires that which is past. So the Lord requires all that is past. You're not getting away. It's, it's kind of sick that this man is as the mindset of his heritage, his bloodline. He knows who he is. But everybody can be adopted in. It doesn't matter. Without any consequences of the dark past that he put on, that he brought out with, with America in his dark history. Yeah, right. Even America that gets caught up in some kind of, you know, situation, right? Some type of, some type of an attack or threat. They're going to stand up. They're going to say we're not going to forget. They'll arm their military and go in and fight. And you mean to tell me Exodus 15 to 3, the Lord is a man of war. He's not going to step up and come back at the enemies that did this to the children of Israel. Keep following that Christ, that Jesus the Christ. And you'll see after all these years where Jesus the Christ have gotten us and our people and the confusion. That's all I have on that show. I won't.